Augustine to me was a very nice town to live in. I lived on the west side of town and Audrey lived on the north. You see, the SCLC was always on the lookout for localities with particularly harsh regimes. Cities that were oppressive beyond the ordinary limits of southern society. I had decided to move down to St. Augustine to open up a dental practice. And the young kids came to me and asked would I consider being the advisor to the NAACP Youth Council. Naturally, I had no reason not to, so I said yes, I would. Washington Street was our main street that had all the black businesses on it. Mm -hmm. I had seen the young people gathering outside the St. Paul's AME Church down the street from me, and I thought, I'm going to go down there and see what they're doing. Well, things started for me when I asked my mother permission to go and participate, and she, of course, said yes. So I went every day over to my sister's house, and that's how I got hooked up with them. But all we were doing was just gathering. Mm -hmm. We didn't start off uh, picketing or demonstrating. Mm -hmm. We would just sit around and talk about what it was we wanted to do, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess we was just tired of going with the signs. We wanted to make a difference. We wanted to just go in, sit down, and ask for service. Dr. Haling, he was our advisor, our youth advisor, and he just motivated us to want to go out and make a difference. Mm -hmm. We had realized that it was time to do something, so a group of us decided that we were going to go downtown for a sit-in. But the NAACP feels that they can't support a fully-fledged movement down in St. Augustine. So for the time being, we don't have support from a national organization. I guess the local NAACP wanted a little more time, but for us it was like, we just need to go, sit in, and ask for service. We were determined not to let anybody put a damper on our activities, regardless to whether he gave us his permission to do it. Dr. Haling still came and stuck by us. Now we've decided to reach out to Dr. King and Reverend Abernathy of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SCLC, to see if they can help us out. So, we sought out St. Augustine, or to be more precise, St. Augustine sought out us. So, we went down to Woolworth's lunch counter and asked to be served. We don't serve niggers here. You need to leave or be arrested. But we continued sitting at that counter. We was unlawful guests. We were the undesirable guests. We were trespassing. And if we didn't leave, we'd be carried off to jail. And that's what happened. Turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Keep on and talking, keep on walking. Marching to the freedom land. When we were first brought down to the jail, they didn't have us in a cell yet, so all 16 of us were just singing. All of us just singing and clapping. We had no sense of fear because we were all together as a group. At first it was fun to us because we knew we were fitting to leave. But that didn't happen. We went to court the next morning and, well, that's when everything just spiraled out of control. The judge had a petition for our parents to sign stating we wouldn't demonstrate until we were 21 years old. And we said, no, don't sign. We was two days in that jail. Then it was a week. Then it was two weeks. Three weeks. Four weeks. So many weeks being locked up in isolation for so long. <laughs> and then to our reform schools. We were 77 days in the county jail. We were 52 days at that school. Joanne and I, we saw Mama's pain when they came up to that school and they saw our bloody knees. We had to wax and buff the floors until you could see your face in them. And if they weren't right, we had to do it all over again. Dr. Halen made us feel like we were doing something right. Mm -hmm. He sent for us when Dr. King came down to St. Augustine. <laughs> Reverend Abernathy was sitting in the corner, and Dr. King was kind of sitting, mm -hmm. kind of leaning, with his hat kicked to the side, sitting on a little plastic red couch. <laughs> when we walked in, Dr. King stood up and said, Oh, I know all about you young people. Job well done. I am so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Now what we need 
is a biracial committee to give the chance to black citizens to air their grievances before a formal city board. The NAACP removed you from your position with the local chapter. Why? Well, the city, or the powers that be, felt that I had in inflamed the atmosphere of the community by saying that I would shoot first and ask questions later. But statements like that only work against us. Local white leaders blame you for the violence, and your organization in turn judge you guilty by association. But it was my home that was shot up in the middle of the night, killing my dog, and almost killing my pregnant wife. And it was me and a few other good men that was captured by the Klan during one of their mass rallies and beaten mercilessly and stacked up like firewood on the stage where we waited to be burned alive. While your anger is warranted, only through the use of nonviolence will the indignation of this entire nation be stirred up on our behalf. There will be neither peace nor tranquility until the righteous demands of the Negro are fully met. It is now we must practice restraint. The eyes of the nation are on St. Augustine. Until we decided that we wanted to integrate and go sit at that counter, we thought that everybody loved one another. That everybody just got along. Hmm. No. That's when they really went completely crazy. Martin and I decided to take on the burden of the campaign ourselves by seeking the rest. It was certainly easy enough in St. Augustine. We plan to go over to the Monson Motor Lodge, stroll into the dining room, and ask to be served. <laughs> well, that evening, I was with everyone at the church. I had my purse, and I was, ooh, I was dressed, <laughs> boy, I tell you. And then, you know, I had no intention of going back to jail, but Dr. King turns to me and says, I want my little hero to go with me and my group. And you can't say no to Dr. No, King. So we all went down to the lodge. Dr. King said, we'd like to enter and be served. And James Brock, the owner of the lodge, mm. he said, why do y'all keep bothering me? Didn't I tell you I wasn't gonna serve you? Oh, then he called the police and all the cars were pulling up and they, they threw poor Dr. King in the car with the dog. And that dog, <laughs> that dog loved Dr. King so much he kissed him. <laughs> Soon after things came to a head, we invaded an all-white swimming pool at the Monson Lodge. A swimming, you might say. And James Brock poured two gallons of myric acid into the swimming pool to burn the protesters. They were horrible. They wanted to kill up all of us. Soon after, we got word that the governor was forming a biracial committee to restore interracial communication but denounced us as outside agitators and asked that we leave the community as if the problem were the demonstrations and not the injustices that provoked the demonstrations. We just didn't want to sit in the back anymore. We wanted to go through the front door just like everybody else. We wanted to sit at the counter and not have to go up to the window. You want to sit in the front of the bus and not the back. Right. And Dr. Halen just really encouraged us in that way. We knew that we could deserve anything, that we and everybody deserve the Constitution. I just feel that I don't have to bow or take second place to anyone. Stand up for your rights and do not offend or belittle the next person. They give you a little and then they snatch it right back. I believe the Civil Rights Movement and the part we all played made a huge difference to a certain extent. But at the same time, we lost a lot of our history. And that, that's the hurting part of it all. I can say with certainty, we learned to be more cautious and less trusting for our confrontations in St. Augustine. These lessons applied in Selma and everywhere else and were valuable in preparing us for a more violent future. God created me brown you a different color. It doesn't require for you to have things that I can't have. And we are all here, and we all deserve the same thing.